initial research on low flush toilets studied just how well everything got through the toilet fixture itself and fell into an empty bucket. Now finally they're taking a look at real life situations. So what happens in the horizontal line that you don't see that's down in the floor? Here's the test rig. They've got three inch diameter pipes and four inch pipes with the minimum distance from the toilet. Another one of a three inch and a four inch pipe with a maximum distance allowed good vent pipes and everything else. They've even got the rig set up so it's adjustable with adjustable flexible clamps that allow them to create dips and sags and change the slope. All of this allows them to study a variety of the toilets and a variety of possible real life situations to see just how far everything goes and does it get out of the drain and into the sewer. With the flush of a toilet, or pulling the stopper in the sink, water surges down the line and then drops away very slowly. Now with a properly sloped drain, all the water eventually drains away. Here is a typical toilet flush. The waste is moving along pushed by a wave of water and as you can see it slows down and here at 21 feet it actually stops and if left to sit there the water would trickle away and disappear. Here there's a second wave before it dries out. So the water's added to the existing water, so now there's actually enough of a head of water to push both of them all the way out to the end of the line. Sometimes when the waste sits there, this could be a problem. Here we slightly colored the water so you can actually see that wave action a little better, particularly where we have a second wave coming along behind a stop. Now of course the water has not been standing there for a very long period of time so it hasn't all drained away. And you can really see the lifting effect of that second flush coming on shortly. The real problem can be when there's been enough time for the waste to dry up and create a real block before that second flush arrives. You'll even notice here that there's some matter that was left behind and the water is slowly trickling away, leaving that to solidify and perhaps cause a problem in the future. I'm going to show you a comparison of running on an absolutely straight slope here, no sags in the line, compared to one with a sag. So here it is, straight away. Let's flush this down. Here it comes. Uh, 25, 26, 27. We're blocked here at about 27. It's where the plug is. Now we're going to go back and drop the pipe just a little bit, put a slight sag in it, and just see what happens with the same toilet. Now what we're going to do is drop this down, create a dip. It's typical of regular construction. It's going to drop down here, go back up to straight away there and just see what the difference is. Okay, can we flush it? Okay, oh, quite a backup wave hitting here. It's moving along and stopping here at 18 feet. It didn't even make it to this edge where it would have been straight away. So we've got a real block here and a lot of water backed up behind it. In fact, the water's falling away behind it this time. What are the primary lessons learned from all this research? First of all, a three inch diameter drain pipe is actually more efficient at carrying waste than a four inch diameter pipe because it tends to float the waste up higher. So there's less friction on the bottom and we get a longer carry. Secondly, a 2% slope is actually better than a 1% slope because there's actually a little bit of momentum in the water to carry it further. However, there's a limit to that idea of increasing the slope for as the slope becomes too high, the water runs away and leaves everything behind. In residential applications with short runs to the vertical drop, none of this is too critical. In long runs, and especially seldom used toilets, waste can dry and stick before the second flush can carry it out to the end.